preview. Now, right now, Microsoft has plans to show more consumer features with the system, but as of right now, there's only so much we can look at, as it is very early pre-release software. Right off the bat, I'm just going to make a few disclaimers. One, Cortana will most likely be in Windows 10, but I do not see it anywhere in this build, so I will not be able to demo it. Two, there is a mode with Windows 10 where it can automatically detect if you're using a touch interface or a keyboard interface, and it will be able to switch your apps, all of your currently open apps, between the two modes seamlessly. It's called Continuum, but as of right now, that is not available in this build either. So I just wanted to get those two out in the open right there. Let's start with literally the start menu. Everyone wants to know, did the start screen go away? Yes, it did. You can still turn it on if you want, but by default, for a keyboard and mouse setup, the start menu now looks more familiar. Microsoft will still give you the option to have your live tiles here, which I like in some cases to get quick glance information there, but having the traditional program list is also very handy for many users. Jump lists are also still in here, so you can hover over an icon and get to your jump lists. Speaking of icons, as you will notice, some icons do look new, but some still look like the old generation icons. Those will all be changed in the final version, most likely, but not all of them are changed right now. And there is an all apps button to get to my programs here in this list, even folders. My account options are right here, change picture, lock, and sign out. And the shutdown, restart, and sleep options are up here too. And the search is right here, so I can search anything like account for account settings, and I get those options up there. But I can also get some information from the web. Another change to note with the addition of the new start menu is that it actually is resizable. So you can drag the top of the menu and flatten it out if you want more of a wide interface like this. Or you can stretch it up to make it nice and tall. The next thing I want to show is how modern UI apps run in a window. One of the great things Microsoft is doing with Windows 8 currently and Windows 10 is that developers don't need to develop for multiple different platforms. Windows 10 is going to run on all the devices, phones, Xbox, tablets, typical PCs. And Microsoft has ways for keeping it all under one roof, if you will, but still having the interfaces tailored towards each of the systems. So for example, I'm on a mouse and keyboard setup. And if I open up a typical Win32 app that runs in a window like this, it runs as you would expect. And you even probably notice some of the interface changes like the thinner borders and the new animation effects. But when you ran a modern app in Windows 8, it would switch to that full screen modern UI environment. Well, no longer. So if I open up an app, it now puts it in this window here. So these apps used to be modern UI full screen apps, but now you can have them in a convenient window. You can still run them in full screen if you want. And with the continuum features, when you have a touch interface only, and that's what the system detects, it will automatically throw those apps into full screen as well. So that's really handy for multitasking. And another cool feature is that this menu right here is essentially a replacement for the charms bar. I can get to the search right from here, share options, settings, I click it, and the sidebar just slides right out and I can control everything right from there. And the full screen option is present there too, and I can just take this app full screen if I wish, or I can go back up to the bar and say exit full screen, and it comes right out. I'll show off another modern UI app just to give you a better feel. I'll open up the music app, again, in a window, very nice. And I can even snap this using the keyboard shortcuts too. And let's say I wanna open up another modern UI app. I can just snap like that, so very efficient, and it runs perfectly alongside your typical Win32 programs that you already know and love. Since we're talking about multitasking, let's get back to that task view button that I was talking about earlier. So when you click the task view button, you get a bird's eye view of all of your open windows. So I can switch to my home folder here, but let's say now I need to switch to something else and it's in the background. I can click the task view button and switch to a different window. And I can even close the windows by clicking the X button right here. In addition to that bird's eye view of all of your open windows, Microsoft also threw in virtual desktops. So if I click that button again, I can add a desktop right here and switch to it. Now there's less clutter. As you can see, the taskbar adapts. There's little lines underneath the icons. That indicates that they're open, they're just not open on this desktop. If I switch back to another desktop, 
you will see that the icons change a little bit to indicate that those apps are open on this desktop. But that's nice for multitasking. I can have all of these apps running here and then have separate apps running just on this desktop. So if I wanted to open up WordPad, I could then do that and work on a document just on this single screen. Okay, so now I can switch back to Internet Explorer, for example, and have all of my other apps here too, and I can interact with them and then switch back to this. And if I minimize this, you will notice it's a nice clean desktop because it's its own virtual workspace. And you can switch between them from the taskbar, or you can switch between them in the task view. The task view is also accessible via Alt-Tab for window switching. Microsoft took this interface a little bit further though. So, for example, I'll open up WordPad. Say I'm working on this awesome README file. Oh yeah, hardcore. <laughs> so I have that. And Snap is still built in. Snap is a feature that I'm sure a lot of people use for multitasking. But the way it extends is now that you can have that Snap interface integrated with the task view for easier snapping. So let's open up some more apps here. So let's say I'm using all of these at once. And before, I could snap them all individually. But now what Windows 10 will do is it works with that task view. So if I drag a window and snap it to the side, watch what happens. It snaps, but now it assumes that I'm going to want to snap something to the other side too to compare and drag and drop between two documents. So it automatically splits that part of the screen and throws it into this task view. So when I choose an app, it comes forward and snaps automatically. I can drag it into the corner and it will even snap it into the corner there and still give me access to my task view. I can click another app. All right, I'll try this one and it will come forward. So now I can split my screen in more directions and have that easy task view accessible. And it may look a little cluttered here because I'm broadcasting this recording through a smaller screen, but imagine on a 4K display or something, this could be very handy. Some other little touches apply to the command prompt. This will be nice for the power users that prefer to use that. So I'm gonna open up a command prompt session and show you a couple changes. For starters, the window is a little more flexible. I don't recall previous versions being flexible like this. You couldn't stretch the window across the whole screen. So that's a nice little touch. But keyboard shortcuts also apply in the command prompt more than before. So if I had a notepad file open and someone maybe had some kind of path in here or something like that, that they wanted me to do a dir listing for, instead of me having to type in the path, let's say it was much longer than that, and I didn't want to type it all in, I could just paste it. So I could do like CD, for example, paste in a path, and then do a dir listing. And then I can actually just shift and go up, copy, and paste. So clipboard compatibility is now present in the command prompt, along with some other convenient shortcuts. So that's a quick look at Windows 10. There's a lot more to come. Microsoft plans to show more consumer features, most likely including the Cortana Digital Assistant in early 2015. And we'll definitely get a demo out when we can, so check back in around that time. If you have any questions about the system, or if you just wanna share your opinion, we are more than open to hearing what you have to say. So feel free to share in the comments section below. So thank you for tuning into this demo, and I will see you next time.